Hi, I'm Nate from CISC's core infrastructure team and I'm going to be doing this short video in order to show you how to install a Salto escension on a standard door. Let's start with the basic tools you're going to need. A ratchetable screwdriver with multiple bits, a Phillips, flathead, and torque. You're also going to need an Allen wrench and optionally an electric screwdriver for a couple of the uh, simpler and easier to do screws. If you are doing a mortise lock, all you will need is what is in the box, a door sensor, and the magnets. A magnet can be either brown or white, and you need to use the larger magnet for a metal frame, but you can use the smaller ones for a wooden frame. This video is to show you how to do a cylinder lock, so we'll need a few extra things. The bolt, the cylinder, a cylinder adapter, a spring, as well as a few screws to keep everything together. Let's take a look inside the box. First thing you'll see is a template on how to drill the door. If your doors haven't been drilled already, you can use this to make the two holes that are necessary for this lock. These are instructions, but we'll be covering almost everything these instructions have to say in this video. You have batteries. Any replacement batteries should be Duracell and almost definitely alkaline. The batteries should last approximately a year. A baggie with all the screws and the little pieces we're going to need. And the internal bolt. And then we have the two halves of the door. The section with the large sensor is the front, and let's work with that first. The first thing we're going to need to do is align the handle for whatever direction the door is opening. You'll note that it is pointing down in packaging. To do so, take the internal bolt and insert it properly so that the small tab goes into the hole that it fits into. If you do not do this properly, the bolt will come right out so you'll know that you've done it right because the bolt is nice and locked into place. Once it's into place, you can very carefully lift the back panel away from the front panel. Be careful there's a ribbon cable there that can, it should not be broken. And allow the door handle to swing in the direction you wish it to be. Once the door handle is facing downward in the direction you want, Reinsert the internal bolt and allow the parts to click back together. This is now in this position. Make sure that you've done it correctly because the only way to do this again is to remove all the screws and start, for, start from scratch. This back panel is held to the front panel by four screws. You'll find those screws in this baggie. Most of the new Salto locks use a torque for these screws. However, you may find that Phillips is necessary. Screw all four of the screws in gently before tightening down.
Then you can go back and tighten in. Now we're going to attach the cylinder adapter. It's hard to see in the video, but there are two divot spaces here and here right next to the internal bolt. You can remove those either with a knife or the tip of a screwdriver or even a fingernail. Once the small foam is removed you'll see two screw holes. Align the plate, place your screws in. These are almost always Phillips. Make sure that you have both of the screws in gently before tightening them down. For the use of this video, I'm going to use this Salto template block to show you how to install the lock. But obviously, you'll be using a true door. Aside from the main cylinder hole and the two smaller holes on the side, you're going to need to drill a small hole for the door sensor through to meet up with the top Salto hole. Let's install the bolt. This should easily slip into the space made for it on the door. Take two screws, these should be Phillips. Make sure they're both done gently before tightening it in. Now let's take the cylinder. The cylinder should be placed into the lock so that it can be pushed out by the bolt when you're putting the front half of the door in. As you can see, it attaches to the inside of the bolt, like so. Let's feed our door sensor through. The door sensor simply has to be fed through until it hits the other side. And you can use anything, normally the Allen wrench is handy, to just sort of push the plug through. Once you have enough slack, you can simply push it in tight with your thumb and make sure you've got the rest of the slack coming out the end. Let's install the front panel of this door. We've previously put it together. Taking care that the ribbon cable goes through the top hole. You're going to feed 
the rest carefully through, making sure to line up the bolt inside the lock. You can hold it with, the, with your other hand so that it comes through the other side and now carefully realign the rest of it it should fit fairly snug but don't be surprised if it falls out a little bit as we haven't secured it yet let's take a look at the internal panel the internal panel like the front panel is made up of two parts. We've got a back plate, which we can take off and put aside for the last step. And we've got the proper back. Make sure the wireless card wasn't bumped loose when you remove the back plate. You can take off this jumper from the top right hand jumper spot and you can dispose of it. Installing this can be slightly tricky and it's often useful to have a second person available but it's perfectly doable with just one. The reason it's tricky is because this is where we're installing the spring. You'll notice the spring is slightly conical shaped and the smaller side should face in to the cylinder like so. Adjust the handle so that it's facing the same way as the other handle and hold it in your hand along with the rest of the plate so you can do this one handed. You're going to need to feed these ribbon cable and the door sensor cable through the top hole on top. and adjust the internal bolt to fit inside the handle while keeping the spring in place. You're going to need to keep your hand on it or else it's going to the spring will push it right off again. And we're going to take our two bolts, one for the top and one for the bottom. We'll start with the bottom. And you're going to start feeding it in by hand. And then we'll move to the top again by hand. Make sure it goes into the bottom hole. If the door isn't drilled perfectly, sometimes you encounter problems. Take your screwdriver. This is normally a torque bit. Sometimes in the older ones it's a Phillips. Yes. Make sure you can feel it gripping inside. Don't tighten it up too tight, just get it nice and in there, and then do the bottom one. Not too tight again, get a little tighter on top tight enough so that the door doesn't pull away. So we're going to go a little tighter here. Now you need to make sure that it's straight up and down. This can be done 
by eyeballing it if necessary but it can also be done by measurement if you still have this it's easy to check looks pretty good on this side pretty good on that side. If it needs adjustment at all, you can shift these from side to side a little bit. If it's too tight, loosen it ever so slightly in order to adjust it so that it's straight up and down. And then you can tighten these in. I don't recommend using an electric screwdriver for this as it's very sensitive and you might strip the screws. You can now do your first test. The internal door handle should work pretty well and it should spring back into place fairly easily. The external door handle shouldn't do anything at all, but should have a little bit of resistance and it should be able to spring back nice and easy. If it does not spring back, you may need to readjust. You may also install the safety screws that may help it spring back. Let's take a look at the inside and wire it up. This button here is used for samming. Most of these newer doors should be coming pre-sammed. However, if necessary, you can tap that button once and then tap the SAM card on the front panel right there. And that should help with the SAMing process. This ribbon cable has a dimple on the top of the cable. However, as it bends down, that becomes the bottom of the cable. And that goes right here under those pins. The door sensor cable goes where the jumper was, the top right hand port here. It too has a small dimple on top and only fits in one way. There are two lines on the side of it that help guide it into place. The rest of the cables can be tucked into the hole, being very careful not to break the ribbon cable. There's a small divot on the side of the hole where the ribbon cable can come out. And then you can take the rubber stopper and fit it into place here. You may think that that rubber stopper is somewhat useless as it's only for internal use, but it actually helps with some soundproofing. Surprisingly enough, sound can come through that small hole, so that rubber helps stop that up. Let's install the placeholder screw. The placeholder screw should not go into a pre-drilled hole because it's going to hold this, the door together very carefully and it's a self-tapping screw.
the screw should be Phillips and I recommend using an electric drill however a hand screwdriver is perfectly fine for the job do that a couple times to make sure that the sawdust gets knocked out now we can take a look at the batteries the battery packaging can be broken easily check the dates in your batteries they should all be good most of these doors are brand new but if they're not replaced with alkaline batteries only we recommend the Duracells fit them in as the diagram shows and if all goes right you should hear the door come to life you can use a construction card or if the door is already programmed you can use your key to test to see if it works there it is looks good let's put on that back plate over the handle clip it on the top first and pop it on on the bottom this part's going to be a little bit hard to see with this panel but it's much easier on an actual door on the bottom there's a small screw it's probably torque take our screwdriver mine doesn't fit and you're going to need to unscrew this screw I'm going to take this panel off and show it, make it a little easier. You're unscrewing this screw so that it tightens into the bottom of the panel, which actually goes over it. In order to remove the panel, you're going to screw the screw in, tighten the screw, so you can lift the panel away. Because apparently my screwdriver isn't long enough, I'm not going to be doing that for this. There are two small safety screws. They go into the sides of the handle. Take your Allen wrench. Put the screw on the end of it. Put it right in the hole of the side of the handle and tighten away then I'll do the second one I'm going to stop halfway through and show you nice and tight make sure the door still feels smooth that's a complete salto door installation let's take a look at one last thing in the installation of one of these doors and that's the door frame 
you're going to be doing two things looking at the strike plate and we're going to be installing the magnet here's the strike plate it gets screwed in with two screws like so and covers over here you'll need to drill a hole in the door frame big enough for the magnet to fit and it needs to be right across from where your sensor is take your magnet insert it into the hole and pop it in the door should close easily behind it I hope that this video was useful to you in the installation of Salto Escensions thank you for watching